Hey YouTube, what's going on? I just straight piped it. Not not a real straight pipe, I just removed the slip on. It had an exhaust leak and a few holes in it. I don't know how the previous owner did that, but listen. I don't know if the mic picks it up good. But she sounds good. I do got a new pipe that I'm about to order. About to grab an M4 slip on exhaust for now. One day I'll get a full exhaust in the tomb, but you know, in time. So there are some things that they don't tell you about motorcycle insurance. For a lot of the younger guys under 25, a lot of people want to get a 1000cc motorcycle and whatnot. You got to keep in mind with the insurance, it can be a, a whole lot more expensive when you're under 25. You know, they could be wanting upwards of $300 to $500 a month, if not more, depending on your driving history. When it comes to financing a motorcycle, the finance company is going to want you to have comprehensive and collision insurance. And so with that, if someone hits you, the insurance company will go ahead and cover that damage compared to, it's bumpy over here, compared to you having a liability policy and if you get hit then there's nothing that the insurance is going to cover you for and i guess that depends solely based on the person their bike and their situation you know you got a brand new bmw s1000 you just bought i see a lot of people buying those you might want comprehensive and collision on a twenty thousand dollar motorcycle m package i believe is like twenty five thousand depending on what state but when is it a good idea to have liability? And that's a tough question depending on the person, depending on the rider, really. Because you can have a motorcycle, right? There's some people who out there who has like 80,000, 100,000 miles on their bike. It's like that value might be, you know, a couple thousand dollars. At that point, it might not make sense to get a, uh, get full coverage on that bike, you know? save your money while riding it god forbid if it gets totaled you can go ahead and buy another bike cash and do the same thing you know it ultimately boils down to how expensive do you want your payment to be every month because having that comp collision it's going to be a whole lot more money typically if you have roadside insurance it's not really going to be that much on the bright side you know it might add like 70 bucks 80 bucks to your policy a year if not less that's not really a big deal, you know? Another key factor is to make sure that you call around to all of your nearby insurance agents and or companies and make sure that you get all of your full estimates before buying a bike. Some people will go ahead and buy a bike, call in to get insurance, not even realizing like, whoa, this bike is actually a whole lot more expensive than I thought it would be. And those are the times that you gotta ask yourself, is this the bike that I need to afford and purchase right now? And by afford, I don't mean monthly payment or anything like that. It's a little shaky over here. But what I mean by that is, is this the bike that I can afford on a yearly basis and monthly basis as an overall cost to the bike? That's the real question to ask yourself. Because there are plenty of $2,000, $3,000 motorcycles out there that you can pay cash for on Marketplace. Granted, some of them bikes might need a lot of work, some may not. Or your smaller displacement bikes, they, even in good condition, they, you typically can get for, you know, $2,500 to four grand typically. It all depends, really, on your negotiation skills, too, at that point. Whoa, holy crap. And I've also learned through the many policies that I've had in different motorcycles that if you call your agent and tell them one thing like, hey, this company is offering me this, can you do any better? A lot of the time they could do a whole lot better than what they initially offered you. And this is kind of the stuff that you don't really hear people talk about. Even if you go to a dealership and buy a bike, they don't really tell you all the insurance tips and hacks you know it's like you're just left to figure out majority of this stuff alone which is so crazy but that's what i've also learned in life with everything not just insurance but a lot of the time you just got to use your own common sense and a lot
lot of the time, those extra steps that you do, it can just be the minor things. Those little steps is what ends up guaranteeing your success and coming out on a better side of things, you know? Definitely don't just stick with <laughs> one insurance uh, quote and go from there. Even if you have an agent that you've done business with a lot of the time, because I've had an agent that I've done business with personally for a few years now. And there was this one time where I had to call into the actual company. Huh, I don't know how I did that. And uh, need to replace the clutch on this bike. It's about that time. There was this one time that I uh, called into the progressive actual corporate number and I was able to save and maneuver my plan, my policy a whole lot better than what my agent was able to do. So always keep your options open, period, always. And then it boils down to the deductibles that you choose. You can have a $500 deductible, $1,000 deductible. Now a lot of time on motorcycles, you typically have a $500 to $1,000 deductible and $1,000 being the max for a lot of insurance companies. God forbid you get in a wreck, do you want to pay less money for your deductible or more money? But you have to choose how you want to do that because a $500 deductible, yes, it's less for the 500, but it's gonna cost you more money monthly, depending if you paid your policy in full for the year, or if you paid it monthly. Or if you got a thousand dollar deductible, which is a little bit more on the high side that you gotta come out of pocket on, it's gonna still have a lower monthly payment. So it all depends. That's why I say it's so circumstantial. Depends on your budget, your money budget your money and save your money as long as you do that I think you should be fine regardless and, and can be good with either scenario because as y'all know a lot of time in this world everything's not about money but you can't ignore the fact that money is equivalent to air <laughs> that we breathe as far as uh, to an extent after your needs are met that's how much money is equivalent to air once you got all your needs met hey, it's just fun money at that time right at that point now what are some of the best insurance providers with that it depends so much on oh, my z400 i remember i was with Dairyland, and i think my insurance and that was a brand new bike at the time a 2022 bought brand new off the showroom floor and I think I only paid $64 a month. Well, let's not rev with the church. Let's be respectful to that, guys. It was only 64 bucks a month and that was full coverage. <laughs> and I think my deductibles on that, again, were only like 500 bucks. So it, it depends on the bike. And as you get higher up in the tiers, depending on age, and by tiers, I mean the class of vehicle, I think after you hit 600 cc's anything above that the insurance can start to get a little bit more that's when your age and your driving history starts to really come into play <laughs> you know you might want that 750 or that 1000 but check out all the providers so Dairyland, i believe they're really good for those smaller displacement bikes and again if the older you are with the better driving history those are good and i was young at the time i might have been 22 with dairy lynn paying only $64. That's woo, big pothole. Fairly cheap. That's what I would say for Dairyland. They're very cheap for the smaller displacement bikes. Now let's go to the 600 cc's and whatnot. I think Progressive is great. They have really good rates. Progressive and Dairyland, honestly, between 600 cc and smaller, I think those two are going to be your best bet, regardless. Once you get up to a thousand cc's at that point, hey, <laughs> it's all about age and, and driving history for any company that you go with at that point. But Progressive, I wanna say, and I'm not sponsored by them or anything, this is just literally my opinion. I think Progressive is like the best way to go for a lot of these bikes. 
So is it best to pay cash or finance? I honestly think paying cash, there's so many benefits to that. But again, everybody's situation is different. When you finance a motorcycle, and they, they'll have a lot of those stipulations, and because you gotta have that comp and collision, you're gonna pay so much more in general for the same bike compared to liability. It depends. And then as far as financing, ooh, I love those downshifts. As far as financing, the best way to come out on top with that i would say get your buyer's order and give you the exact full process get your buyer's order from the dealership what you're going to do is do your negotiations which a lot of dealerships don't have much wiggle room on the price because they have slim margins but shake them down as much as you can <laughs> get your out the door price what you're going to do is take that after you negotiate your fees and and discounts and everything go to your local credit union depending what state you are it doesn't matter what credit union go to any credit union and what you're going to do is you're going to get a pre-approved letter and the reason why you're going to go to a credit union is because the interest rates are so much better than going to the dealership that's no secret but I still see people going to the dealership all the time to get finance, which is not a problem either, but you're gonna pay more in, in interest, a whole lot more. The banks will typically have a buy rate on what you got approved for, and then they'll tell the dealership like, hey, go ahead and pay, go ahead and charge so-and-so whatever percentage points that you would like to charge them. And with that, let's say if you got approved for 7%, you have good credit, the banks can still go ahead and, well, the dealerships, I should say, can go ahead and charge an extra 3% on that, you know? Extra 3%, and that's how they'll make their money. But you really got approved for seven. See, the credit unions, you, I think their rates are between 7.5 and 8.8 .8 with how the economy is going now. With recreational vehicles, which is what a sport bike is, or any motorcycle, boat, RV, anything like that, the rates are always going to be higher than cars anyway, even with good credit, because it's recreational. They look at it as not a need, it's more of a want. And so you have to keep all of that in mind. Now, if you want to finance at the dealership, that's cool. I've done both. I went to the credit union to finance and the dealership to finance. This is how I'm telling you. I, I'm doing. I'm telling you this from experience, not just some guy who looked up stuff. Like I've I've been through the process multiple times, and I've paid cash for bikes. I've literally done all three: <laughs> dealership, credit union, and pay cash from both. I've done it all, so you can trust my insight. I'll never tell somebody to do something that I don't do. But uh, that's the main thing to keep in mind: is with the dealerships, they offer the convenience aspect to where you just go in you know you might be paying a little bit more but the convenience aspect in and out but one thing i would say and i'm guilty of this i've made mistakes i would say just take your time man you know i know you don't want to go through the credit union and then go to the dealership but do that because a lot of time the dealership might run your credit multiple times multiple hard inquiries compared to the credit union they'll run your credit once <laughs> you'll get a good interest rate and a lot of time with them you can make principal payments with credit unions Woo! make those principal payments and pay it off even sooner compared to some banks that dealerships use all of it only goes towards the payment not interest and principal it's a lot of nuggets to consider with that between paying cash and financing again circumstantial but paying cash typically just come out better. Easy to just swap the title if you want to trade, which you can do at the dealership too, but you don't have to deal with the hassle of all the extra paperwork also. Counter steer. Nice Harley. And then another pro to paying cash, which is obvious, no monthly payment. All you gotta do is worry about your insurance. I think that's one of the main goals in life. Financial independence. The less bills you have, and the less amount of money those bills cost, I mean, you're that much closer to retirement, you know? 
which is a little far to think about, obviously, but it's something to keep in mind, something to consider. These bikes are fun. Whether it's a cruiser, <laughs> a Grom sport bike, anything, man. These bikes are fun, but the whole objective is to not get screwed when buying one because that one decision can dictate your whole future. Imagine you get a payment that's too much, plus your insurance is too big of a payment. Let's say even if you sign for 48 months, that's four years, guys. What would you be restricted from doing in your everyday life? I didn't know they were building this. What would you be restricted from doing for your everyday life? Because you got screwed on a motorcycle price payment and not doing thorough research on insurance before you made a purchase for that bike. Life's all about decisions, man. We're not taught about a lot of this stuff in school, which is it's just mind blowing. So, I'm not no financial advisor or anything like that. I'm one man telling you my experience and hopefully you can take that and grow with it, you know? We've all done dumb things and we've all learned from things and gotta keep that going and be able to pass the torch to everyone else around you. Especially if you have kids <laughs> or considering having kids. Get through all of that now so they can have a better life. And if you're married or got a got a spouse or relationship or whatever, so they can have a better life too. But yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Comment below any tips that y'all have in regards to insurance and purchasing of a motorcycle. And uh, see you guys soon. Key out.